and praise. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, today we will discuss a very important topic. Lovers. Lovers. We will take our text from the book of uh, second, First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 7. I read, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Thank you. You see that? You know, uh, many of us claim to love Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now we have many people who go about going on the street, preaching, telling people about him. They go about saying, my Lord, my Lord, Jesus Christ is God, is my Lord, is everything. But in their closet, they had no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. This is happening in the world. But you go out telling people, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, I love Jesus. Today we are going to discuss this. This topic will help you to identify yourself, to help you to know where you are standing. Because a lot of you go out to schools, to associations, to groups, to villages, telling people Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. And they even get people to repent of their sins. But these people, personal life, they, they don't even know Jesus Christ. They don't even have any personal relationship with Jesus Christ. This is happening in the world today. Many people. And when you come to them, ask them, what is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ? They will begin to say, mm, you know, mm, you know, mm, it's hard though. See that? This is happening. So that's why we want to discuss this topic. I believe that wherever you are, by the grace of God, you will be touched. If you are in that category, the Lord God Almighty will touch you, touch your life, so that you will now begin to reshape yourself. Begin to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus genuinely, where you will get to have a, a personal relationship with Him, so that you, two of you can now begin to talk. A deep talk, something that is necessary, something that you require to live your life, a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ, all right, so that you can actually know the Jesus Christ whom you claim to love. Don't forget the topic of today, lovers. Thank you. You know, like I said before, many people go out claiming to you know, to know Jesus, claiming, telling people about Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the lover of my soul. They are telling people. They preach. They have churches. They have different, different denominations. They even control many, many groups. There is no doubt that the people will say, oh, this is true. They love Jesus. But in the real sense, when they go to their home, to their closet, in their bedroom, they are not... Their heart, they do not put their heart on Christ Jesus, but rather they put their heart on this deity, put their heart on this stone, wood, object, things that they use their own hand to make. You see that? So this is how the game is playing, and then no one knows about it. It's true that people will never know until you die, but I am telling you now that wherever you are, if you find yourself in that category, that you have many followers when you tell or talk about Jesus. You tell them how Jesus is good and all, but you yourself, you don't even follow the principle. It's time for you to start rearranging yourself. Reset your life. This is a time of remission. Remission of your sin. Resetting your life. Okay, this is good. Trust me, you will not regret it if you come to this understanding. God help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, this incident uh, uh, is just like a, a man, a man 
who go about telling people that he love a girl. You know, when you know when a man love a girl, they go about telling their friends, "Hello, ah, that girl, I like that girl. That girl is my wife. That girl is my wife." You know, they, they actually claim this thing everywhere. People, all their friends can talk about it. Oh, that girl is the wife. Oh, that guy is the wife. But in the real sense, this man has never genuinely had a direct contact with this girl. This happens all the time. Where the girl will not be aware of that. But the man will go about telling all oh, his friends. That is what people do. Every of your friends know that you love Jesus Christ. But you personally, you have never really called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that? You always go to your deities, go to other gods, go to your father. So even take their pastor to be their God. All right. So when incident happen like this, instead of calling upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you see them running to pastor, calling upon the name of their pastor. You see that? This is happening. All right. So it's like that. That a man love a love a woman and tell it to their friends does not make the woman to be their wife. All right. We both know that. We know that for you to actually have a, a direct contact with a woman, a girl, you will have to approach that girl and you will have to tell that girl your heart. You know, talk to the girl. This is important. And the girl will hear you and then you will not take decision. That is it. That is why as a, a person who wants to wash, you know, walk with God, you we have a guideline if you genuinely want to work because it's not enough for you to carry a nitty evil something a deity put it in your room and then you go to the altar go to the you know pupit go to friends go to relative tell it then jesus is lord jesus is lord follow jesus follow jesus but you when you go inside your house you lock your door uh, you don't follow Jesus, you now begin to put your heart on that stone, on that wood, on that uh, evil, deity altar, evil altar, and you are connecting your heart to that place. When incident happens, you run to that evil altar in your closet, you will rely on that altar. But your friends, everyone around you know that you are calling Jesus outside. See, this is the reason why we should consider this topic very important. The lovers, those that claim to love Jesus outside. Do you love Jesus inside? When you are inside, do you love Jesus? Do you call upon the name of Jesus Christ? Do you talk to Jesus? Do you have a, a, a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ? This is important to talk about, all right? Because that you, like I said before, that you talk to, tell your friends about a lady tell, tell your friends about the beauty of a lady and all that that you will be your wife and all those things does not make the lady your wife the lady you both know that sometimes the lady never knew that you existed uh, you see that so we have a situation where some men after many years they will say oh when i was in school Oh, how I love that girl, how I wanted to marry the girl, how I tell my friends about it. But the lady never knew about that. See that? It's about the time. All right? So for you to genuinely, you know, have a, a, a union with someone, you will have to talk to the person. You have to have a genuine relationship with the person. All right? So when you go to a lady and say to a lady, you know, this is my position of this position of pain with me. I am in love with you, and I think I want to try to work things out with you. I want to know your opinion on this matter. You see that? When you genuinely speak your mind, the lady will look at you and say, Okay, I hear you. In fact, the lady will first of all notice you, will know that you are there, and then will not take time to monitor you and study you. During this time, the lady will be able to see how you talk, how you do what you do. You see that? Then they will not begin to see, oh, maybe this is my man. Or, oh, this person is somehow. This is what happened. So when you come and say, I want to serve God, 
Oh Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I love you. I want to love you for the rest of my life. That is what Jesus Christ do. He will hear you immediately. He will listen to you. He will take note of what you said. And then he will take time to not begin to monitor you, to see if you really mean what you just confess. But many people confess, I love you, I love you. And then the next day, you sit there with other ladies. You see, many men go to a lady and say, oh, I love you, you are so beautiful. But the next day, the lady says, okay, oh, that's a nice talk. Okay, let's see about that. The next day, they will be found with other ladies saying the same thing to other ladies. That's what we do. We go to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Oh, how I love you. And then he look at us and say, wow, thank you. But the next day, you find you bowing down to a deity in your closet. What is that? Do you think it's good? No, it's not good. That is why we will talk about it. And I pray that God Almighty will open your heart of understanding. To know that you might think that, that is, it does, this whole thing is a, is a game. It's not a game. Jesus Christ of Nazareth he is saying to you today, if you really love me, if you really confess that you love me, it's time for you to start acting like you love me. All right? This is important. I pray that God Almighty will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, sometimes this incident that I said to you, sometimes it might come to a place where this lady will never know of the plan or the, the decision of a, such a man. A man who claimed to love a lady and never told the lady about it. The, the lady will never know. All right. So, so many people, they live in this world, they die without then having a, a direct contact with Jesus Christ. But these are people who have big, big churches. Yeah. Because they use so many things, so many evil, just to, because they need money to gather people and then have the church pay money, tax them money, money, buy land, buy planes, buy houses, and then... They die. They die and then what? They never had any direct contact with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right? But they know that Jesus is there. But they decided to find their way, manipulate their way through life. You see? This is happening. So that's why we, uh, this message is out. It's out to many of us who go about telling people about Jesus Christ but in the heart of heart, they did not put their heart on him. They did not put their heart on Christ Jesus genuinely. All right, this is very important to, to think about. This is important. You cannot live like that. You must have to reset yourself. This is a, a call for remission, a call for repentance. Repent of your sin and call upon the name of the Lord genuinely. And then live up to that. Live your life up to that. Let him see that you mean what you are doing. This is important. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is real. And Jesus Christ is saving his own. So please, let's get to work. All right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. It is true that when a man, you know, is saying that, going about telling people, that uh, I love that woman just like that. Sometimes the woman we know because the friends we say it. Ah, that lady, that, boy, that man said that he love you. What do you think about it? So what? <sighs> yeah, I don't know about that. We never met. I can know they're saying that, but we never met. We know that. So sometimes when you are preaching about Jesus Christ, yeah, just guys, we know notice that because sometimes people you talk to. They will call upon Jesus and say, Ah, Jesus Christ, this person, is, this person, just like we know in the Bible, when the demon say, Paul, I know, Peter, I know, who are you? You see that? Jesus Christ, when people you talk to genuinely call upon the name of Jesus Christ and say that I was introduced by so person, Jesus Christ will recognize that. But the truth is that he don't know the person, know you. 
You are just talking. You can talk. That's why you see Paul said, no matter how the gospel is preached, the most important thing that the gospel is preached. So there are many people who preach the gospel for money, for fame, for anything. All right? That does not make them to be. So that is why I'm saying, those of us who claim to know Jesus and in the real sense, they have no knowledge about him, they have not had an encounter, genuine encounter with Jesus Christ, it's time for you to start thinking about it. Repent of your sin. Drop all those evil ways. Remove your hand from those evil, evil deities and all those evil stones and woes that you keep in your closet and put your heart on Jesus Christ genuinely. Jesus Christ is alive. Only Jesus Christ can genuinely save you. You know about that. All right? So this is important. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So please understand the truth that Jesus Christ knows that you are there, that you are preaching, telling people about him does not make a make the relationship. All right? What makes the relationship is you personally, your personal encounter with him. You see that? Where you can do all your dealing job and then come home and come down to yourself and speak to Jesus. Say, thank you today. That is it. Instead of that, many of us will go about having crusades, saving people's lives, and then when you come home, you go and then begin to bow down to a deity in your room. That is very bad. Huh? That is bad. Think about it. This message is for you. You claim to love Jesus, but in your heart of heart, you show your allegiance to deities, to evil, to demons, and you sacrifice to them. You know that is not good. You cannot show a good face outside and your inside is dirty. Think about it. Let us clean our heart. Let us connect our heart genuinely to God. This is important. That is what God wants. That is the message of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right, all right, please think about it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. There's no one like you, Father. Thank you. Many people who go about maybe getting married to some women, you know, the, the marriage is based on lies. We also have that a situation where some men will find their way into women, marry them, you know, and then they will never understand themselves we we'll see a situation where they will always have problem. This one will go to this direction, the other one will go to that direction. We know that. That's what happened to some pastors, some people who find they are because of whatever they maybe because of their appearance or so, they go to the seminaries to train themselves as pastors or people of God and all that. And then they ended up not following the principle, the guideline of Christ Jesus. And then they find themselves fighting against Christ all the time. Christ wants this, they want that. This thing happen in marriages. Where a man will want this, the wife will want that. You know, they always have problems. People we claim to go to church, and you, if you go to church, you see them all the time. They are doing their best part. They know everything in the Bible. They know everything about everything. There's nothing you can tell them. In fact, when you talk about Jesus Christ, they will tell you more. When you bring out one Bible, they will bring two or three. So what will you tell them? But these people, in the real sense, there is always a trouble, conflict between them and the Lord. Because the Lord will want them to do this. They will not begin to do this. This happens all the time. So all these things are what we have to check. If you say you are a Christian, you cannot do things your own way. You must do what Christ wants. Remember, what Christ wants, you will know as a Christian. All right? But many people, they always want to have their way. So, that is, this happens all the time. And they not be like a man and a woman who are living as cat and rat in their home. You see that? This happened in this, 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 this same thing. So as a 
someone who claims to be a Christian, and you want to show to the world that you are a Christian, you should learn to maintain the relationship you have with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is important. So that you will not live as a man and a wife who are living as cat and rat in their home. Where Christ wants you to save his soul, you will begin to tell the person, bring money first. Where Christ will want you to pray for people, you begin to tell them go, they should go and pray for by themselves. You know, this thing happens. You are not doing what you want, just like a wife who does not care about the husband. And you, you know, they call them anyhow wife, anyhow. So you're not living anyhow. You don't care about Jesus. Yes, you carry the cross, you carry the people see you as one who love Christ and all that, but in the real sense, you are anyhow, you don't obey his, his instructions. You see that? This is another category of people that we need to examine themselves. This is important. All right? Let's talk about it. Let's think about it also. If you are one of those people who are anyhow, who live anyhow life, don't care about Jesus, you don't even hear him speak to you. You don't even do what he say. It's time for you to rearrange yourself. This is a message of remission. To reset your life, to change your ways, and then begin to live for Christ Jesus. Alright? This is important. This is very important. But you cannot continue to live anyhow. It should not pay. You know, a man and a wife who live in the same home and they don't agree, we both know how difficult the life will be for them. Huh? The life is unbearable. They have so many conflicts, they have so many confusion. This one will go out at we, the one will do what they want, the children will be anyhow, no control. See that? So that is why it is important as someone who is working with Christ to let him be tit, let him be the head of your family. So that you will now begin to walk with him. So that you will know how to actually walk well. And how to take care of your home. Alright? This is important. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Father. I know you might think that this is nothing. But this is big. But many people out there, they are having this problem. Because they have many people in the church. They no longer hear Jesus. They hear themselves. In fact, some tell the their followers that they are now Jesus. So whatever they say is final. You see that? This is how this happens all the time. They don't even allow the Spirit of God to move. Remember, when you are in the house of God, the Spirit of God can move. And people of God can be inspired to speak. You see that? And they can even speak to correct you sometimes. So you should learn to hear. Because most of those people, if they have allowed their members to be, to have access to this dimension, without blocking them with laws, you will see the members reprising them, you know, giving the inspirational word that will help them to come out from their darkness. You see, but because they have made their self God, so the member think that oh, that's nothing I can say to him. He is no, he knows everything. And what, what are the reasons they, 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 they know nothing? If you know that the power of God is big, it cannot be limited in you. All right? God is almighty and his power is. So you should learn to free the people that follow you so that they can assess this dimension where the power of God can actually spread everywhere. And you will be a beneficiary of it. This is important. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So please change your way. If you are just a church goer, you know you are deceiving yourself. You go to church very well. You know the Bible. You dress very well. So people will look at you and say, ah, this is a Christian. This is a Christian. Whereas in your heart, you are evil. You are a witch. You are a wizard. You are a bad person. You do. You are a thief. You do so terrible things. You are a masturbator. You masturbate you at will. You don't control yourself. You don't even care about the word of God that says that the, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You, you use your body anyhow. You say it doesn't matter. After all, I'm here. I'm lower. I lock my door. I'm in my closet. No one sees me. The Lord is watching. 
This is true. So I made your ways. Take care of your body. This your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. All right? He wants to use you. He wants to take good care of you. He wants to use your body to reach out to people, to save lives for the kingdom of God, to save souls. All right? Because the enemy, they are not joking. Satan is not joking. Satan is doing everything to cause confusion, to destroy. Their mission is to destroy. So we are here to bring light to the people of God. So wherever you are, our mission is to own your light. But when we own that light, it is important that you open your eyes so that you can see. If you don't open your eyes, even when we own the light, you will still remain in darkness. Don't, think, don't forget that. All right? So as we own the light of your life, please open your eyes and see. Okay? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is good all the time. Glory to God, my son. Glory to God. Thank you. We both know that in life, for a good relationship to, to stand, there must be a, an agreement. You know that. For, for you to have a good partner, partner in everything, there must be an agreement. So this is it. Many people don't care. They just go about, you know, labeling themselves as Christian without any agreement with the Lord. You know, this happens all the time, just like those who, because it's spiritual, so people don't know. They think that ah, since the signboard is there, the banner is there, the church is big, people are there, so I think this is good. That is how they go about it, without asking the Lord. You see that? So as someone who really wants to serve God, I think you should go into the spirit and ask. Don't ask, don't be conditional when you are asking. People ask condition because they see the church is busy where well, maybe I will have money there. A lot of people follow church because of money. Huh? You will be frustrated when you follow go to church because of money. You will be frustrated, you'll be confused. Alright? You don't go to church because of money, you don't go to church because of uh, any condition. You don't go there for anything. You go to church because of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because you have you want to continue to have a union with Him. You want to know more about Him. That's all. If you want to make money, you go to school, go and read books, go and go to work, go and learn job. All right. Do not go to church because you don't want to know. Don't do that. All right. You want to know about God. So that is the deal. So you, you, many people, they don't know that. There's no way you can be able to have an agreement without uh, have a good relationship without a good agreement. Christ wants to save your soul so that you can inherit the kingdom of God. The church wants to give you money, bless your house. What kind of, what, what relationship have the earthly thing got to do with the, the heavenly thing? What are we talking about here? So there are things we should consider. As a Christian, you can manifest many things in your life. That has nothing to do with what God wants. You are here on earth. You have dominion to run things. But there is another thing. The heavenly realm. You can't walk your way physically to that realm. For you to get there, you must build your soul to that place. That is the game. The contract between you and Christ is to walk with him spiritually. So that you're able to inherit the kingdom when you drop this king. You see that? But you don't, you, the, 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 the situation now is how can you partner with him when your idea, your, your, your thinking, your focus is on your earthly money? Money, house, cars, fame. You're after that. And then you, you, what kind of partnership would that be with Christ? Jesus Christ is a spirit. Okay? He is a spirit that dwells in us. He wants to. Prepare your soul so that when you transit, when you exit this place, you will be able to merge with the greater light. That is the. It's of you to understand that and start to work that out. 
while you live on earth, while you walk daily, take care of your earthly things, you forget about those spiritual dimensions of life, and then you begin to focus on these earthly things. I want to die here. You have people coming to you telling you you will have money and you are happy because the flesh is hungry, the flesh will eat. You will have cars, you will be happy because the flesh needs those comfort. You have house, you'll be happy because you 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 have a house, a house where you can live and you will not take those things to heaven. Think about it. When you go to church, your mission for church is to build your spiritual life, not money, not physical things. Don't have this idea. Remove it from your head when you are going to the, to to anywhere you want to worship God. This is a spiritual practice. Okay, you want to build your soul so that you can be able, you can be aware of yourself when you are asleep. No one can come and take your soul and to be using you to do evil anymore. That is where you, that is the fight. Alright? Comment things are playing on earth here. Hmm? There are some highest power, evil power that can actually make you suffer. They take your soul because they want to make crumble your soul because they understand that it is your soul that goes to heaven, not this flesh. So they walk, they seize your soul. Alright? So this is what you go to church to help yourself, to build, to make awake. So awakening. All right, this is what this is very important to know. So do not go to church with the understanding that you do have money. That is not a good agreement. Christ cannot partner with you under that uh, agreement. No, all right, it's not going to work. You might, if you like, you can deceive yourself and begin to think that is true. Whatever money you have is because you work for it. If anybody throw money into your bank, you must return the money back to them. If it was a by mistake, that somebody supports you with a gift of money, is because you must have done something that merited it. You see that? You both know that there is no way you will just be at home. There is no miracle like that that will ever happen. The president of the United States will just put money in your account. You both know. But if you have been a soldier, you have been a warrior, you have done something great to that country, and now you are in a very remote area suffering, anything like that can emerge where they will call you out from nowhere to come and take your glory. So you must first of all walk. So you don't go about trying to deceive yourself, sit and sleep all day, say God will come and do something. Think about that. All right? Let's help ourselves, okay? Hmm? If you spiritual, you will walk. All right? Everything that had to do with Christ Jesus is spirit. Alright? Your soul. When you are awake in your soul, then you will not be conscious of yourself. Then you can begin to walk. You walk. You know what to do. You walk with your hand. Take care of yourself and people around you. Help the poor. Those that cannot walk. Because not everyone that can walk. Alright? But we know those that cannot walk. And you know those that can walk. Alright? So if you know you can walk, do not begin to go to... Many people stay in the church the whole week. Alright? They won't walk. They will just be waiting for God to give them money. They say they want to fast and pray to them. Don't stop that. Alright? That is fallacy. There's no base. Alright? There's no fundamental base for that. Don't let anybody deceive you. Okay? There's a time of ref you know, build up. When it's time, when you are passing through a period of refreshing your soul, you want to build your soul, you can do things, not for money. Don't ever go to church praying that God will give you a miracle money and then you are fasting over that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Alright? One, one important question is how do you come to know Jesus Christ? For many people, I wonder, they say they are Christian. I want to ask you a question. How do you come to know Jesus Christ that you now claim to be a Christian? Huh? Because there are so many ways people come to, you know, have the you know, knowledge of Jesus Christ and they start to follow Jesus Christ. Because that is very important. How do you, personally, how do you come to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Huh? We know that some people were born in the church. You know, been born by pastors, deacons, and all the people, workers in the church. So they grow up with their parents in the church, and then that is how they now come to know Jesus Christ. 
Now, another group of people, they, they were introduced by family members, by guardians, by friends. When they go to school, friends would tell them, come, let us go to this crusade and all that. They from there, they will be to go to church. Huh? You personally, how do you come to how did you come to know Jesus? Huh? And most of those people that come to know Jesus through this way, they do not have a personal relationship with Jesus. They actually go to church daily without personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. When you ask that, you say, oh, my parents, we are Christians. That's what they do in the, this side of the world. We have a, a family that we say they are Christian, but we ask the question, they don't know anything, nothing. See, so this happened. Whether they are Christian by book, by note, they have the record, they have the certificate, put it in their house. This family, we are Christian, but they don't even know, have any relationship with Jesus Christ. All right? That is very funny. Like it's, it's like a, a man who, you know, you, who, who marry a wife he does not know. You don't know your wife. You wake up, you're looking at her. You don't even know. No, no, we don't know each other, like I said before. So it's very funny. So a Christian is someone who, uh, who, who, who come to have a relationship with Jesus. Before you become a Christian, you first of all, Acknowledge him, acknowledge his supremacy, know his power. All right. If you are a baby and you are growing up, at least from the age of seven, six, seven, eight, you are already getting the knowledge of who Christ is. All right. This is true. When you're a young little baby, huh? you already have to get knowledge. So this knowledge will now inculcate in your heart, become an integral part of you. So that you can, you, no one can tell you differently anymore. All right, this is important. So it's not enough for you to say you were born in the church of God. That one, that is all, and you don't have no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not enough. It's not enough. Hmm? You should know that that does not give you the license to to inherit the kingdom of God. So what gives you the license to inherit from God is your personal relationship with God, with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the word of God, and that word of God is what is taking us. See that? So you must know the word of God, Jesus Christ. This is important. All right? And live the life, live that life. Hmm? The reason why we, are, we, are, we have that grace is because during the time of our life, there are some errors that will spring up. The grace of God will guide us. But you know that you, you, they are not voluntary. They are not things you purposely create in your heart to do. All right? You should know that. So this is it. So do not go about deceiving yourself, putting uh, deity in your room, and then going about telling people, let us follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. You should help yourself. All right? Mm -hmm. Please. So that it not be like a, a man and a wife in the house. And when you ask the man, how is your wife? You will say, I don't know. And when you ask the woman, the wife, how is your husband? You will say, I don't know. And they are, they mean it. It's true. Because they can live in that home without knowing each other. This one don't know what food, this food, the food this one like. This one don't know the clothes, the, 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 the clothes this one like. This one don't know what this one like. See that? This happens all the time. They don't know each other. So that is it. When you are a church goer, you go to church very well. You church, church, you go to Sunday school, you go to meeting. Every meeting in the church, you're always there. And you do not have a personal relationship with Christ. You are like a man and a wife in the house that never know each other. You know, they don't know each other. They cannot actually say, this is my husband. This is who he is. This is true. All right. So please, let us live as good lovers. Someone who genuinely love. If you really love your wife, love your husband, you will know them. You will know them. You will know that you know. You will look at them and know them. 
Hmm? So let us understand that so that we'll be able to know our Lord. Okay? So that gradually you'll be able to follow His steps and uh, His directions. All right? If you really love Jesus Christ, you will do this and it will help you to be able to follow His directions. All right? The principle, the guidelines that He put before us. Okay? This is very important. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. We ask some people, how many of you love Jesus? You see, many people will raise their hand. You know that. Many people will raise their hand. Hmm? Most everybody will raise their hand and say, yeah, I love Jesus. Why? Because Jesus Christ was the pity good the image. You know, he was a good man. And everybody, everyone knows that. You see that? That is something we should consider. So, many people don't even know him. But because he, they consider him to be a good man, a well reputable man, man who has won't live a very good life, they love him. All right, even though they don't really know Jesus Christ. Huh? In this present world today, we know that if a man truly loves a wife, that man will do everything to protect that wife. See that? See that? that is, the same goes to a woman. If a woman truly loves a husband, that woman will do everything to protect that man. That's something you should know. So if you come out as someone who genuinely loves Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I think it's time for you to start doing something better. It's time to start doing anything you can to please him more than to please yourself. Just as you please your, your wife, just as you please your husband. All right? It's so important. Let us think about this. When you start to love Jesus, make him your genuine lover, and you start to follow up the principle, the guidelines that he has given us, and you start to show to the world the genuity of your love for Christ. I want you to know that you will not regret it. You will move the heart of God. And when God is moved, we both know the result is unspeakable. All right? I want you to start thinking about it. You should think about loving Christ more than everything. Ready to give up everything for Him. This feeling, you will have that feeling. And that feeling is very important. Because God sees through your soul. Alright? God will see that. Don't forget that Christ gave up everything for us. Mm -hmm. He gave up everything for us. He came down here to give us access to the to light. We were in darkness. We were in darkness. No one can show you the light. The only one that can show you that light, that greater light in the spirit, is Christ Himself. Alright? No, no other being. Everything is in darkness. Here is darkness. Alright? So Christ is the only one that will take your soul to that light. So let us understand this fact and help ourselves to continue to work hard, to connect genuinely with Him because you must connect with Him to get that light. Alright, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Since Christ himself gave up everything for you, I think it's time for you to reciprocate. It's very important that we also reciprocate. This is expedient. This is important. The God Almighty gave us the grace to reciprocate. To give back a little of out of the all the wonderful love that he has showered on us. The God gave us the grace to give it back. To love back. Alright? We need that grace. Thank you, Father. 
Don't forget in the first Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. The Bible says love is power, patience, and kind. The Bible goes as to say, love does not envy or boast. So you that call yourself a pastor, don't boast. If you love Christ genuinely, do not go about boasting. Do not envy your neighbor. Do not envy other pastors. But that pastor has a big church. That pastor is making big money. I am not making big money from the church. They do not begin to task people and all that. No, stop that. That is not the way. If you genuinely love, do it for yourself. Does not envy, does not boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Don't be rude. Don't be arrogant. Alright? Reduce that, that uh, character in your life. It is not irritable or resentful. Don't begin to choose others for another because of their dress, because of their reward and all that. No. Try to love your followers the same. Do your best. Alright? This is important. The love does not rejoice at wrong doings. When someone does something that is wrong, do not rejoice. Discipline them. Tell them that they have done something wrong. This is important. Alright? Love rejoice with truth. See that? Do not block people that are trying to speak out the truth because you want to, you know, you want to show that you are more powerful, you are a G.O. own the church. So you now allow people to speak the truth. Stop that. Alright? This is important. Okay? The Bible says, love bear all things. Love believes all things. Hopes all things, endures all things. May the grace of God Almighty be with us. May the love that God Almighty shower on us, may we give, have the grace to, to return also the same love. So that the partnership will be able to work well. So that the thing will function well. A partner between human race and God Almighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am here today to discuss a very important uh, topic, uh, which is uh, sow a seed. You know, this topic is uh, is very, very important because uh, many of us are found in this uh, a situation where you were asked to sow a seed to get uh, what you want. And uh, we keep, you know, doing it, and uh, we don't really know what we are. Most of us are doing. Yes, some of us understand very well. Uh, as we uh, try to enter this uh, this uh, December, by the grace of God, uh, tomorrow, I take it upon myself to express it, to talk about it, to present it uh, the best way it uh, it will go, so that uh, by the grace of God. You will understand better okay the best way to sow a seed all right so that god will appreciate it all right because that is what we want all right? when you want to sow a seed you uh you go to the ground you look around yourself you check that the ground is good all right you don't just go sowing a seed on the rocky ground or uh, Tongues. No, when you check that the ground is good, then you uh, you can then sow your seed, and then when you sow that seed, you have faith in your heart that 
that seed will yield profit. That is why you sow your seed. Do you know that? Huh? If you know that the place is not good, if you know that the ground is not good, it cannot work out things, you will not put your seed there, right? But many of us don't care about this. We don't even look very well. We don't check the ground to know if the ground is good. All right, we just go there and sow our seed and get confused at the end. So we will be discussing this issue. It's very important. All right. So today is the money. I know many of us are not there, but it's okay. I hope you will uh, you will uh, you will see this video and uh, you will comment. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We will be taking our test from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter chapter eleven. Yes, Ecclesiastes chapter eleven verse. Uh, hello, hello, John. Good morning. God bless you. I'm happy to see you this morning. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, as a matter of fact, we discuss uh, today's, today's topic is so a seed. Uh, I want you to please tell me what you know about this topic. I know many of us have different ideas in regards to this particular topic. Please, I want you to tell me what you know about it. Let us discuss it together. All right? Uh, and I know many people will be blessed. People's eyes will be open. They will understand better. The better way to sow a seed. All right? This is good. Uh, especially this period of Christmas. So that uh, we will not mistake why we sow our seed. All right? Thank you. God bless you. Uh, thank you, John. Peter John. Thank you. Our test is taken from the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. And it says, So in the morning and also so in the evening. But you never know which of the two will go where. Alright? That is good. Yes, uh, you know, the what go you first thing to check when we want to sow a seed. Yes, 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 Peter, thank you. First things to check is what does God want? All right? That is very important. Because the will of God is for us to sow a seed spiritually and also physically. This is important. To sow a seed spiritually and also physically. And how do we do that? You know, when you are conscious of God, you are sowing the seed. Yes, when you are connected with God, you are always in the spirit. You feel about God. You love Him. You connect to Him. You are sowing the seed. Because during that time, you are conceiving, you are conceiving the, 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 the things. We have peace. We have joy. You begin to conceive. You begin to connect to Him. And He also will cite you and begin to relate with you. It's light. Because he's, He saw the light there and then He continued to relate with the light. And then one day, you will see that 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 seed you sow will grow and people begin to see that the, the beauty of what you have conceived i don't know how to communicate this to you but i, I hope that god almighty will speak to your heart because this is so important all right hello judas oh hello good morning valerie god bless you i appreciate you all thank you oh thank you peters oh it says sowing seed starts from within and without. Oh, you are so blessed, man. When you want to sow a seed, the Bible said, I said to you, it's both spiritual and then physical. All right? In the morning and then in the evening. Now listen to me. When you connect with God, with your heart, genuinely, you are sowing a seed. And God Almighty will cite you from afar and know that someone has sowed a seed there. That seed must germinate, that seed must grow. But for it to grow, we both agree that you cannot just sow a seed and leave. You have to nurture it, grow yourself. How do you do that? By renewing of your mind. You continue to work with God, studying the word of God, 
grow, be committed to the things of God, continue to work on it, and then you will find out that you are shiny. People begin to see the beauty of what you have sown and ask you, but when you want to sow a seed, you sow in secret, but people will not see the beauty of it. That is how it goes. But you know, when you go to some places today, it's not the case. That is not the way they look at it. Huh? The will of God is for you to sow into him and he will grow. Whatever he lays in your heart, we, everyone will see. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. You cannot speak evil when you conceive good in your heart and you cannot speak good when you conceive evil in your heart. There is no way you can sow a bad seed and expect good. No, we won't accept that. All right. So this sowing of seed is very important. Ah, Key, how are you? Good morning. God bless you. Oh, young Diamond. Oh, God bless you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Please contribute. Oh, I can see Graciel. Thank you so much. Please contribute to this topic. Sow seed. Our brother Peter said, sowing a seed starts from within to without. Wow. That's great. God bless you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes. The best way to, 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 to sow a seed to the Spirit, like I said, is by studying the Word of God. When you start to study the Word of God diligently and start to pray, you start to do this. These are things you don't do before, but you just suddenly you start, start to do it. You are sowing a seed. You are sowing it. And you, think you are not committed to the things of God. You now begin to do the things of God. You, you are connected to Him. You wake up in the morning, you connect to Him. In your place of war, you can begin to relate with Him. And people begin to see that something has changed. That is, you are sowing a seed. And I want to assure you, as you continue to do that, God from afar, He sights you and is watching you. He can begin to see that something is happening there. Someone is sowing a seed there. And then he connect with your heart. When he connect with your heart, then you begin to see peace, joy, all those good things. And then you know you cannot keep them. You are going to dash them out. People will be sooner or later. People will begin to see those things that you have conceived for a long time. That is it. And when it goes out, it's going to be beautiful. And you know that, huh? So that is it. Now. How do we sow a seed in the physical? Because I told you that we have sowing a seed in the spiritual and sowing a seed in the physical. All right? Hello, David. Oh, God bless you. I appreciate you. Thank you. We discussed today sow a seed. And we take our test, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 6. The Bible says, sow in the morning. And so in the evening, you never know which of the two will go where. And I, I am just telling you that there are two types of sowing. The first is to sow in the spirit. And the second one it is to sow in the physical. Now, we just discovered the one for the spirit that when you sow in the spirit, you are sowing to God. You are connected to God. You love God. And you do the things of God. You pray. You study the word of God. You are committed to the things of God daily. And then the peace of God will continue to rest with you. The comfort, the joy of the Lord will rest with you. And then by the time it gets to a stage, people around you will begin to see those, those things. And then you know you can't hide them. That is it. And we both agree that when you have those things, the peace of God, the joy of God, the comfort of God. That is nothing you cannot achieve on earth. That is nothing. Because these are the things that make you to coordinate yourself, to behave yourself, to think where, to reason where. And then you can begin to act where and begin to invent good things that people have never seen before. I pray that God Almighty will open your heart of understanding to this very particular topic. So that you will learn to sow to the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 
Now, let us talk about the, uh, to, how do we sow to the physical. You know, when you talk about physical things, this is you and this is me. These are the people we see, our neighbors, our relatives, our people around, our friends. These are the physical people that we see. And then, how do we sow to them? We both agree that sometimes people say that, well, I don't know how to do it. No. Yes, you can sow into their life by many seeds. They don't sow into people's life because you know that they are rich and that they will give you back the money. Don't sow into people's life because you know that they are your pastors, because you know they are going to pray for you. That's why you sow into their life. No, no. Don't sow into people's life because they tell you to sow into their life. Somebody will come and tell you, sow into my life for you to be blessed. Don't do it. That is not it. Because it's, you are not, you have not done anything when you do that. It's actually a force. When you want to sow into people's life, you as a child of God, you know you are a child of God. The best way to sow into people's life, the Bible says, love your neighbors as yourself. Then if you love your neighbor, then you start to do good to your neighbor. When you see that the, your neighbor's things on the floor, you pick it for them. When you see your neighbors are hungry, you give the little you have to support your neighbor. When you see that your neighbors, maybe during, during this festive time, and you see that they have no food to eat, you cook and you give to your neighbor so that they will also celebrate. When you do that, you are physically sowing your seed. This is the best way to sow a physical, physical seed. And we both know that in time, those little, little things you do for your neighbors, they will definitely yield a result. Some people will say, but how could that be? Huh? No, don't say that. You know, sometimes there are so many references. Some people will be doing good and doing good. They think that nobody sees them. And sometimes you will be surprised that someone who is very rich, very great, will just be seeing you from afar. And you don't, wouldn't know anything can happen. Hello, Joyness. Oh, God bless you. Oh, thank you. Ah, young Wizzy. God bless you. Thank you so much. Please, we discuss uh, sow a seed. All right? Please, I want you to follow up, comment. Tell us what you think about it. All right? Other people will also benefit. Remember here, I'm trying to present to you. All right? I am not a pastor. I don't have a church or something. Here, I'm just, it's a platform where we interact, where we edify ourselves, where we help ourselves. All right? So please, I want you to contribute to your opinion. Like our friend Peter said, that to sow a seed is from within and then goes to without. Which, of course, is a very right thing. When you sow a seed in the spirit, it goes out to the physical. And uh, another better way to sow a seed physically is to support your neighbors, to support people around you. In your place of work, you see that people need support. You do your little way, your best way. You don't need to give everything, do everything. No, do your, little, do your own portion. When you continue to do this for your neighbor physically, you are sowing a seed. All right? And I remind you that people who come to you and say, sow a seed to my life, be careful with them because we have so many references like i said some of them you don't even know uh, where they belong remember when you want to sow a seed you go to the ground and you look very well and you check if the ground is good for you to sow the seed and some of those people you don't even know them you don't know if they have a fertile ground you don't even know if they are evil ground because there are some evil ground and they call us they say the people of god and they are not people of God. Anybody can use their mouth to speak. People of God. I am a child of God. I am a man of God. I am a pastor. I am a, a prophet. I am whatever. Anybody can do that. But you as a Christian, you must know that anyone who comes to you, the mighty that you sow a seed to them, it's not true. Because whatever you will give to the Lord comes from your heart. Alright? This is so important. This is so important. And if you, if you, if you want to 
maybe you are think I'm I'm trying to tell you different thing. If you ask Abraham, the father of faith, he will tell you that when Abraham fought the war and won that war, he came as he was coming home. He saw the king of Salem, which is Melchizedek, and he, from his heart, he chose to give a tent to Melchizedek. Melchizedek did not force Abraham to give him anything. He did not say, Abraham, so it took my life. It was Abraham who said, I want to give to you. Now, the same thing goes to Solomon. Solomon, after he, God has blessed him, he looked into his hand and said, No, what will I give to my God? He brought all the gifts and animals and sacrifice to God willingly from his heart. And God Almighty saw the heart. All right? When God saw the heart, the signal was so strong. And he came to him and said, What do you want me to do for you? Even the widow in the church, he, she conceived in her heart that if I can go to God today, to the, to the synagogue today, I will give that which I have. That little coin she had. The Bible said, when she came to the church, to the synagogue, she gave what she had. That was a willingly. And Jesus Christ saw this and said, that woman gave the best. Because she gave from her heart, genuinely. We both know today that when you go to church, sometimes you have, uh, maybe you have a, a note. And then when you go to church, you see other people, they are giving coins. You say, ah, actually, let me just change this one to give coins. And then you change the notes and you give coins to God. You will know we do that. And we both agree that you are deceiving yourself. Because when you go to God, whatever you desire to give, let it come from your heart, genuinely. No one should force you to do it. Ask Ananiah and Sapphira. What key then was that they conceived in their mind that they were going to give everything to God. But when they got to the before the Holy Spirit, they now they lied and they divided it. Alright? You can understand that. That is, it is yours. Whatever you have is yours. When you want to give to the Lord, Come before God as you want, as your heart desire. That is when God will accept it. So, sowing a seed in the spirit, you are the one that will willingly come to God in prayers. You are the one that will willingly come to God in Bible, studying your Bible daily, commitment to God daily. You are the one that will do that. And then God will not see you from afar and signal you out among the many and then bless you. The same thing goes to when you are sowing a seed in the physical. You are the one that will come out today. As we are talking now, you will come out today and look around and see people that are hungry and see people that need help. And you are the one that will go out and begin to support them in your own little way. When you do that, you are sowing a seed for the future because you never knew which one will come first, whether the one God will bless you with or the one people around you will see and bless you with. This is so important. All right? So, people saw this thing and then go capitalize on it and start to tell you, sow a seed into my life so that you will be blessed. They don't even care about your righteousness. They don't even care about your holiness. They don't even care about your future. They only care about your money. And they say, bring your money to me. Give me your seed. Sow into my life and then you will be blessed. Sow into my life, then you will have your money. Sow into my life and you will have children. And all these things. They say, sow into my life and then you will have good health. And then you go about giving your money, giving your, your valuable things, giving your cars, and then you are looking for health. You are looking for blessings. You are looking for happiness, joy, peace. They are not anywhere. They are in God. Huh? They are in God. This is so important. The book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You see that? He did not ask you to go and begin to, someone will come and, he did not ask you to give money to people, so give more, so, so see to in people's life to get that. No. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness 
then every other things will be given unto you. If you know that God is not a liar, why are you deceiving yourself and going about to people that ask you to sow into their life before you can be blessed? Eh? Why are you doing that? Please, stop it. If someone comes to you and say, sow into my life for you to be blessed, you know that that is a, that is a liar. It's for the pit of hell. Jesus Christ did not say that. Bible did not say that. All right? Huh? Whatever you want to give must come from the depth of your heart. And when you give from the depth of your heart, you will receive the reward. You will receive the reward. You will be blessed. All right? But when you are forced to do it, you cannot be blessed because you are not happy when you are giving. A pastor say, go and bring money and then you go and borrow money. You are not happy. You begin to pay interest. You are not happy. Are you happy? You are not happy. Why do you continue to do what? Do that. Please, this Christmas, this period of festival that we are about to enter tomorrow, I want you to go calm down. I want you to sow this seed. Get to the word of God. Be more prayerful. Read, study your Bible daily. Be committed to the things of God. All right? And then walk with God. And then you will see your next year full of blessing. God is no joke. Right now, God is blessing his people. People that are connected to him, God is blessing them. All right? This is important. God wants to bless you. But he wants you to come to him. That the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek him now and reap the reward in due time. All right? This is so important. Please. Hello, happy. How are you? Oh, good morning. God bless you. Thank you. Ebuka, God bless you. Thank you so much. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Judith, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. All right. So this is so important. As we enter the December next, uh, this uh, next, uh, tomorrow now, today start please. So in the spirit and so in the physical. These are the things you will do. And when you do it, you will be so happy next year because we will both be celebrating because the desire for me to you is so for you to be blessed. Yes, because if you are blessed, that is when we will be able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ online. If you are not blessed, if you don't have money, if you don't have comfort, if you don't have peace, you will not be able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ online because the Satan is dominating the line. You can imagine what is happening. Even to the point of making married women to be dancing naked on the line. What is that? Married women with their children, they will be cooking and be dancing naked. They will be naked and be dancing and they want, what, what is that? What is that? See, Satan is so trickish. All right? So, let's find a way to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's find a way to reduce this thing. Let people be respectful. Let them respect their self. All right? Right? It's good to come out on the on the social media. It's good to be everywhere. But let us have respect for ourselves. Let us respect. We are not animals. We are human beings. All right. So if you know that you are a child of God, you are a human being. Stop spreading your body online. All right. Stop that. That is not the best way to make become rich or whatever you want to get. You can. Come out and present. There are other people that come and present. They can, you can even bring up a story, good story that will edify people, that will bless people. You can be doing all those things. People will still like it. You don't need to spread yourself and naked yourself with children around you, and you are naked, you are shaking your body, and then you think you are, you want to what? What do you want? This is from the pit of hell. Satan is deceiving you. All right, stop it, and let's get to our, ourselves, okay? This is so important. Uh, may God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. I know we get a little message from here. And I know that this uh, December that we're about to enter, this celebration time, you will sow in God. Uh, you will be committed to Him, to the things of God. You will be more prayerful. You will, you know, you will study your Bible. You will understand this. You will be more connected to the things of God spiritually. Because when you are doing that, you, are, you sow a seed. And you both agree that the greater light, God Almighty, He that shines everywhere, He will see you and He will connect His light into your heart. And when that happens, you will be different. You will not be the same again. 
And also, you should learn to sow in the physical. And when you sow in the physical from this December, I assure you, you will do it. And then you will be blessing people around you. You don't have money. You don't have anything. If it is support you can give. If you see an old people that are poor, that are hunger, that are, they cannot help themselves, if it is water, you can help them to fetch. Help them to get water. Put the water in their closet. Help them to get things for them. Those people that are weak, those people that are sick, those handicapped people, go to them, support them. Do your little way. You are sowing physical seed. You don't know which one will bring you reward, okay? Is it that this physical one that you are doing now or the spiritual one that you are doing? I assure you, if you are connected in these two levels, in these two dimensions, you will be so blessed and you will give a testimony, all right? And you will also tell people around you your secrets and God will bless you.